Hello and welcome to this week's Stronger, Leaner, Lighter show. I'm so excited to bring this amazing guest on the show today, Savannah Falzone. I'm going to share more about what she does in just a minute. Stay with us. <laughs> I've been dying to have my guest on our show for a while. Savannah and I have known each other for quite a long time yeah. as client, friend, networking partner, client, <laughs> friend. So we and I've and I've watched Savannah's business grow really from that an idea. So I want to introduce Savannah to you. And this is going to be a great show. If you're one of the sandwich generation, if you're one of those people, and I think many of us are, where we've got young adults at one end and we've got elderly parents at the other and we're battling strangling with both this is great so savannah is the business owner of retirement care solutions her business was founded six years ago to assist retirees seniors and families find the right solution when transitioning into retirement living and aged care she's passionate about retirees enjoying their retirement years and our elderly living their last years in an enjoyable safe environment She's worked in the retirement aged care industry for over eight years and realized early on that not all solutions uh, suited or were the right ones for each individual or couple. Hence, she re created retirement care solutions. This enabled her to assist and facilitate her clients move so it's smooth and easy whilst giving them a peace of mind, helping them through their journey from start to finish. And she's also a co-author of the best-selling book, Unlock Your Feminist Feminescence Code, having recently won in four categories on Amazon. Savannah, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sally. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, you're right. It, our journey has been amazing. Um, you've seen some rock bottom <laughs> <laughs> moments in my life, but uh, now we're enjoying some highs. Um, absolutely. And, yeah. Absolutely. And, and can I say that you were recently... Can I say it? You're recently engaged. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to say more for me, but no, he's an amazing <laughs> man. and um, lovely. Yeah, he yeah. is. Charlie is amazing. Um, but I thought I would never go down that path again. But anyway, no. it's, it's you all right. You have to wait for the right one. And he obviously yeah, adores you too. Adores yeah. you as well. That's a beautiful story. All right, Savannah, I've got many people who are on the call today or are going to be listening to this podcast mm -hmm. later that have indicated to me that this is a very challenging time for them for this very reason. I want to know how and why you started Retirement Care Solutions. What was the reasoning behind it? Um, why I started it is because um, I was already working in the um, private aged care and retirement industry. and. Um, at the time, it wasn't fortuitous, but um, the position became redundant. And that was a few days before I was off to jet off with my kids overseas. And I came back thinking, wow, what am I going to do? But it was during that time um, that I worked in that industry that I realized that the solutions that I was um, offering weren't always the right solutions and so I needed to create something um, that enabled me to um, explore all the solutions not just two solutions but having been through the journey myself um, as a carer and as a daughter um, and experienced uh, carers burnout, all of those things that a lot of um, your audience may be experiencing or have or may going to experience. Mm. Um, I realized that I needed to provide support um, with solutions from um, the beginning to the end. Um, I didn't want anyone to follow the journey that I had and realize at the end of the phone uh, you know when I'm speaking to my mum's um, care provider crying I can't do this anymore and for them to say well we can do this now I'm like well why did it take for me to get to this burnout point for you to assist me and my mum mm. mm. yeah. 
yeah. So did you have your mum at home with you or was she in her own no, home? No, no. So um, we went through a transition for mum. When my father died um, 13 years ago, um, they were two peas in a pod. Um, mm. Beautiful relationship, but she was completely lost. So within 12 months of dad passing, um, I felt like... I had a fourth child and that's terrible to say but she was lost mm. um, so I took it upon myself to make the decision for her and um, the only decision that she could make was which villa that she was moving into in uh, a retirement village locally and um, Hindsight is a wonderful thing. I wouldn't have changed the decision to downsize her into retirement village. Um, I would have just explored more options. But at the time, uh, the option that we selected was, uh, we thought was the best one for her. And um, after five days of, you know, crying, mum was always a drama queen, as I am. Um, <laughs> uh, we, she just said, this was the best thing you've ever done for me. Um, mm. So she felt secure. She had a lifestyle. She had her independence. Um, we visited just like an ordinary home, but she just had peace of mind that she was always safe. Mm. Um, she had friends at her doorstep. She had activities. She had bus trips. So it gave her a lifestyle that she wouldn't have had living in her suburban home and I couldn't still having three young children I couldn't be there 24 7 for her so it was a really good um, decision all round yeah uh, you know touching on that I think that what you're saying too many people feel it's like when the decision has to be made that you can't cope you've got family or children or a partner and and you're going to have to make this decision about your mother. That's a very, very challenging emotional time. How was that for you going through that time then? Oh, uh, look, I felt um, it wasn't easy. Um, mm. I, you know, had the discussion with my brother as well, and um, he lives in Adelaide. Um, he would support mm. me. Um, whichever decision I made um, we knew that the decision was a lifestyle decision not an investment decision when you move into retirement living that's a key factor it is uh, a lifestyle decision and so once we got our head around this is about mum's lifestyle mm. it was an easy decision to make yeah and I think that you raised an interesting point because I think for a lot of families in this time right now with COVID, where there may be one mm. member of the family who's having to make the decision because others are trapped Elsewhere. in other states and can't get there, or even that parent being on their own. Yes, yes. So are you seeing that coming up at the moment? Oh, absolutely. And what I'm seeing, though, is um, our retirees and seniors are isolating themselves even further um, mm. living in their own home they're now because of all the lockdowns they're actually afraid to leave the home yeah yeah whereas if they're in a community it's almost like um, a, a small city within itself and so they have what they need so even if they're not venturing outside they still have um, like-minded people nearby who can mm. provide um, social um, uh, company, all of those sorts of things that if they're living um, in isolation, it's a, it's a different um, scenario because your neighbours could be full-time employees, they're mm. working, mm. Um, they've got children, so you, you can't rely on your neighbours. We do mm -hmm. know that there are some amazing neighbours out there, um, mm. but for the large part, it's not their responsibility. No. And, and, and we've got the situation, our personal situation. My dad actually lives in a, uh, you know, a tourist area. So he's surrounded by a lot of houses that are empty during the week. People come down on the weekends. And um, 
And that's always been our big concern is if something happens, there's nobody there. Is what happened just recently where he, he left the phone off the hook and had issues with the internet and we couldn't get a hold of him. And uh, it's a really challenging time. So when, when you went through all this with your, with your mother, yes, was it at that point you decided to start Retirement Care Solutions? Yes, so um, I came back um, from overseas and I just realised um, there was a, a business similar to this mm. concept that I created, but I felt um, I could add more value um, mm. having um, walked the journey through supporting mum through dad's palliative care and then um, the journey as carer for mum mm. uh, and also as her care was increasing um, working a full-time job just wasn't going to cut it I couldn't mm. um, juggle you know as you said being in that sandwich generation I mm. couldn't be mum to three kids as well as carer for mum um, yeah, right. and working full-time so the business gave me that flexibility to manage her doctor's appointments her hospital appointments as well as um, nurturing my clients and easing them into retirement and aged care as well but that, that's a really interesting point though isn't it because it's not just the decision to move them from home to retirement there's care involved and then if if, if your mum's been you know has been looking after a, a, somebody in palliative care you've got that going on and grief yeah. it's just a complicated yeah. thing so so what are some of the things that you offer with retirement care solutions? Um, in terms of the services? Mm. Yeah. So um, I was um, really big on providing end-to-end -end service. So I, we can provide the initial uh, consultation to look at what are the needs and wants for the actual client, but also mm. looking at the family as well. Um, how? What are the dynamics? Where are they located? Do they need their mum or dad closer to them? So we look at that, and then we look at the solutions um, of: Do they stay in their own home? Do we assist them with bringing in-home care? Is that a more? Um, uh, is that a better outcome? Because maybe in a year or two. Um, they could be going into aged care. So it's really probably not a good idea to perhaps move them into retirement living with exit fees mm. if they've got to move maybe in the next year or two. So mm. we manage the solution depending on what the so, so, uh, uh, scenario is. Um, so then once we've got the solution, uh, we have a decluttering team so we can help our clients declutter their home. Um, we pack them, we move them. And what maybe a lot of people don't realise, um, I've an experienced real estate agent of 10 years. So I help my clients sell their home. So they've already gained my trust um, through the solutions and then mm. we help them navigate through the real estate um, process and then we move them, unpack them and uh, assist with Centrelink, we assist with the paperwork for aged care, for the retirement living, um, whatever they need, we, yeah. we, we organise. Um, that's that's got... extraordinary because that's the other part of it, isn't it? It's not, it, it, everything you were saying is like, oh, of course, oh, I haven't thought of that, or, oh, sell the house to clutter. I mean, it's, it's all things that as the, this age group we're in, it's up to us because yeah. And then if you're, as you said, working full time or you've got kids, you know, that, you know, many of us, many of us, not not me, but a few people have still got kids at home that might be late, at, you know, uh, late part of high school or going to university. And we all know what that's like. That yes. So so what you offer is that kind of, oh, my goodness, thank gosh, I don't have to think of that. Yes, yes. because mm. usually the first question is, where do we start? Yeah. Where do we start? Um, and through my experience, I I have solutions that people sometimes haven't even thought of. Mm. And the other important um, connections that we do have is the 
funding options for aged care and retirement. We um, have really good uh, financial advisors that specialise in retirees and uh, aged care. That's really important to get your finances sorted because it is a costly exercise if you don't get it right. And also the other um, service is the estate planning. We ensure that our clients' wills, enduring powers of attorney and advanced health directives are in order whilst your loved ones have the cognitive ability to make those decisions. Yeah. Once they're deemed no longer to have legal capacity, it is you can't change um, who has enduring power of attorney. So if you have a loved one, and even ourselves, because sometimes things happen to us younger people um, so mm. if you don't have an enduring power of attorney that you trust to look after your finances and your health um, choices uh, it gets quite messy yeah yeah so, I think it doesn't the, the, the board of tru trustees or the yeah so you system. then have to go through QCAT yes mm. yeah yeah so it's um, a minefield yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's absolutely. So, so we just we have a process, we have a checklist, and we just make sure everything, um, our I's are dotted, our T's are crossed, to make mm. sure that that whole transition is smooth sailing. Wow, that's extraordinary. Yeah, you know, I mean, you're saying things that I wouldn't think of. Yes. You know, when I'm thinking of, uh, in fact, you know, our own personal situation with my dad. There are things that, you know, it's like, oh, thank you very much. Somebody else, please do this for me. <laughs> it's too hard. <laughs> yes. You know, it's just too hard. I just got a comment from uh, Sally Martin I just want to share with you. She said, it's so hard. I knew my sister was not managing anymore. I took my younger sister to look for a home, and she said very gently to my sisters that she'll be here for six months. She was very well cared for. Yes. Yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? If you find the right place, you know they're going to be. And that's the thing. So, do you help people kind of find the place? Do you, do yes. you go with them? How do you how do yes. you sort that out? Yes. So, um, I do the research after our initial consultation and what I call an analysis of considering what their needs and wants are. I mm. do take into account. Um, the services that they need do they need um, dementia care what are their finances what is their affordability what location where are they going to get their support from from mm. visitors and so forth so I'll compile a list and I actually then book the inspections and uh, I do the inspections with the family as well uh, just through my experience you know I know what questions to ask I know how to negotiate the fees um, there's a lot to it yeah there's a lot yeah. to it um, because for most people they just go looking for you know what does the bricks and mortar look like mm. and, and that's all well and good to make it look nice but is the care going to be provided for what your loved one needs yeah and i think that's what's really you know because we go oh that's pretty yes oh it's got a bowling green or oh it's got a bar yes. which is me oh it's got a nine hole golf course which my dad would love in a bar that's about it yes yes, yes. <laughs> but dear, as he gets older i just want to um a comment from kathy this retirement solution offer is fantastic i volunteered at aged care for 11 years and personally seen the dynamics of this system and love the social care aspect volunteers provide Many families struggle with making the decision. It is Absolutely. a hard decision, isn't it? I yeah. mean, it's really hard. Just before we move on, because I want to ask um, a few more questions, but I'm just going to pop up here and get a hold of um, of Sylvana. Um, so there's a Facebook page, Retirement Made Easy, um, and you can get a hold of her there um, or send a message to her Facebook page yep. at savannah.balzone, F-A-L-Z-O-N, um, for those who are listening on podcast, um, that you can get a hold of her because it's just such, you know, I, I, you know, we have discussions all the time with my sisters of, you know, that you know, that's another question I want to ask, you know, because I know, I mean, we're lucky, you know, I've got three sisters and a brother, and everybody's on the same page. When time comes, one of us is going to make a decision, and we're like, whatever you decide, we'll do. But there must be one part of it that, that dealing with family dynamics at some stage. Yeah. Well, the thing is, usually, um, if your loved one has no legal capacity, 
as much as um, the decision is shared amongst the family, if there's yeah. only one dur- enduring power of attorney, ultimately that is the person that is going to make the decision. Yeah. So it's really important that the enduring enduring power of attorney is selected is a person that you trust um, and that you trust that they will make the choices that you feel are the ones that you would make yourself if you were were Mm. able to Mm. yeah Mm. so um, yeah it's really important what I have found though is um, when families come to me I'm usually the one that um, shares the news with their loved one because the, the burden of the guilt is so great, they, mm. they, they find it really difficult to express that next step. So mm-hmm. it's usually me. It's so usually how do me. you find that? How do you find that? Oh, um, I feel like um, it's, ju- it, it, it's, um, it's just another family member, so it's emotionally really hard for me as well. Yeah. But... Um, I, I'm fortunate I've got an amazing support system behind the scenes and mm. um, I lean on them, yeah. But, mm. yeah, so mm. I've had many um, a client's family whose loved one, we start off with an easy transition of respite care when it's aged care and then when it's come to permanent, I'm the one that then goes, well, it's worked really well. This is where you're staying obviously not in those words but <laughs> yeah. I, I've had children say I just can't I can't yeah. tell them so mm. I do well, that's, it is it's hard I can feel the yeah. pang in my heart too so if anyone trip to Melbourne <laughs> <laughs> just let me know <laughs> okay I probably can't come back <laughs> that's right that's right you get there but you can't come back okay let's talk a little bit about the business so what has yeah. been some of the challenges that you faced uh, in building a business like this well, for me, initially, as a single mum, the finances, um, mm. it, it was a startup that really, it didn't cost anything, so to speak. I didn't have to buy any um, bricks and mortar. I don't have a shop front, so to speak. Um, but, you know, with any new business, um, I was an unknown quantity mm. out there. Um, I did have... Um, some um, contacts but I didn't have the runs on the board in terms of this brand new business that I started so yeah finances was difficult to um, begin with Um, the other challenges yeah it's the emotional roller coaster ride that I uh, was riding with the clients as well Mm -hmm. Um, but also the challenges at the beginning was you know juggling that sandwich generation juggling my mum's needs mm. more so than my children's needs in the end um, mm. because my mum's needs escalated you know she needed to be called twice a day every single day morning and afternoon and just like you you were saying with your dad you know he had the phone off mm. well she was then slowly um, um, early onset dementia and she would just go out and not tell me so she didn't know how to use a mobile phone so I couldn't find her Mm. Um, so then I would I couldn't reach her so I would go to the house and she wouldn't be there I'm like oh my god where's she gone Mm. Um, then I'd go to the shopping center looking for her so it was really 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 hard yeah I, I, I walked in a lot of my clients' shoes. I understand. Yeah, yeah. and that, that's the biggest thing, isn't it? You know, the people know that you've been there. I think yes. that's the heart. You're someone that understands it. Do, how do you motivate yourself when you've had a day like that? What do you do? Um, it took me a long time to realise I need self-care as well. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when you're a people pleaser, when you're a giver, Um, it's really hard to sometimes take stock and go, I need to give myself and fill my tank. Um, So it's come with um, experience and maturity, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll ever be mature, but anyway. (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, um, that's for old people maturity. No, that's exactly people. it. it yeah, it's overrated being mature. But yeah, it's self care. Um, yeah. And I have to say, you know, a big turning point was that um, program that I did with you. I, I think we worked out it was about eight years ago. It was or six years yeah. ago. Um, yeah. That was a huge turning point in my life, mm. and um, realizing that. Uh, whether it's things or people that no longer serve my best interest, yes. then um, I let them go or let it go. Mm. And mm. so it's been uh, a journey that's taking, taken um, a roller coaster ride, but mm. um, it all for the better, you know. Yeah. I, I love where I am right now. Yeah. You are also the co author of a book. Yeah. The Feminine Essence Code? Unlock Your Feminine Essence Code. Um, yeah. yeah. I was um, very fortunate to connect. Well, I had known Shah on and off for quite a number of years and then um, got the opportunity to um, feature um, in the launch of a magazine. And then she then asked me, did I want to be a co-author in... Um, the Unlock Your Feminescence Code. And it tra it looks at the journey from my childhood. Um, as we know, you know, the first seven years can mould what happens mm. in the rest. Mm. Um, and then we have tapping to unlock all of those um, yeah. uh, <laughs> limiting beliefs and let them go. So, um, so what happened in my early years really did shape um, for whether it was good, bad or indifferent, um, you know, my childhood is my childhood and um, amazingly um, loving parents, um, mm. but difficult times as well. So the yeah. book, that chapter explores those sorts of things and um, then, you know, the journey of starting the business. Uh, but there are, I think, uh, 17 other amazing women in there sharing their journey as well. Mm -hmm. So it's an inspiring book um, on self-empowerment. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely a book uh, for women that um, just need a bit of a pick-up, um, some inspiration and that mentality of never giving up never no. giving up people no. where I've come from um, yeah. yeah it would have been easy to give up but I knew there was more well and, and, and you're... Go on. sorry I, I'm also a role model for my children and so you know giving up was not an option no and you know I think you know for many people when, when they see a business like yours and they go oh wow you know, you, don't, you forget that there's a lot of journey underneath that, a lot of questioning. And, of course, as you and I have talked about many times, the closer you get to success, the more your past story comes up. It doesn't matter what level you're at, it's always going to come up. So I've just put a link here and I'll pop a link in the comments below of where you can find out about the book. And you can also um, get a hold of Savannah. She's also got some books uh, yeah. that are available as well. Um, and you know it's just it's just such a great story before we go i yeah. just want to know do you have anything any do you have a story in particular that stands out for you that in your business that that kind of you really went you know what this is why i do it yeah there is actually um i had a 86 year old client who was living independently um by herself um however had really um, poor mobility and really struggled to get to the shops so she was really isolated and her children lived probably an hour away um, very close family and would come and visit as often as possible but I came into her life to initially just have a discussion about what solutions there were um, so the family and I went and did our exploratory tours as we do and um, I intuitively generally know which is the right uh, community for somebody but it's mm -hmm. not for me to make that decision um, yeah. 
anyway, they came up with the same um, solution. It was a new facility over on the uh, north side. It was like a five-star hotel. Um, she was living in um, government housing, um, had no funds, and um, I was able to secure a government fund, fully government funded placement in this beautiful wow. facility. So I said, well, let's just go and have a look and do two weeks respite and see what you think. So when in the first day, the second day, I get a phone call, please don't let me go. I want to stay. I don't want to leave. This is the best place. For the first time in 86 years, someone had painted her nails. Oh. She, yeah, um, and it still warms my heart. She was a mother of nine children. Oh. All she ever did was gave. And so for the first time, um, she was being looked after. But because oh. she still had the cognitive ability, she was still able to give to the other residents. So it was a real yeah. win for her. She was giving and still rece yeah, finally receiving. Yeah, so. Isn't that lovely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I don't yeah. think I'd want to go either. <laughs> it was, it's a beautiful facility, absolutely. <laughs> and that's the misconception. There's a lot of publicity of the odd ones that don't necessarily do the right thing. But there's so many that do. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's finding yeah. the ones that do do the right thing. That's exactly right. Yeah. Savannah, this has been such a yeah. fantastic interview. And oh gosh, you know, you're, you're an angel, but you, you've, okay. you've arrived doing a business at the right time that offers so much for so many families and probably some of the toughest times of their lives as, you know, as, as in our age group, having to make these decisions for our own parents. So it, it, I can see where your, where your work is just extraordinary. I'm going to again, um, if check out Savannah's Facebook page, Retirement Made Easy on Facebook, or you can find her on Facebook at Savannah, S-A-V-A-N-N-A-H dot Falzone, F-A-L-Z-O-N. I'll also pop it um, in the chat below. So um, uh, as Kathy's just said, I see this all the time, I paint nails. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, lovely. absolutely. Lovely. That this volunteers are just amazing. Thank you, Kathy, for the work that you do too. I know, I know, having you know, being a, on the other side of it, how much we value people that would spend time with our families. So, um, the, 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 the volunteers are just for no. Hey, Savannah, thank you so much, and please reach out to Savannah if you're in this situation, even if it's just for a chat, um, it, because I think it's something we can all use a little bit more uh, of knowledge of how we deal with this time and and get a hold of savannah if this is what you're going through savannah thank you thank so you, much you. for everything you do no, it's no, thank wonderful. You, thank you, thank you. all right and uh we'll see you next week on the stronger lean a show on 12 o'clock on wednesday thanks savannah bye <music>